Welcome back. It's still Breakfast Daily on City TV. Thank you so much for staying with us. It's now time for health, and we'll be learning about five ways to love our breast. If you've not done anything this month, at least start the journey of looking at your breast and examining it. And of course, this segment is, is sponsored by the farmer's market. You can go to the farmer's market for all of your fresh fruits, vegetables. They have a salad bar and a smoothie bar as well. If you want to start your journey towards a healthier lifestyle, you need the farmer's market in your life. And I have been joined by Dr. Kelvin Owusu, Medical Director of Optima Care Diagnostics. Good morning, Nasey <laughs> Good morning, Jifa. How are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> very, very well. You're in high spirits. Well, we are talking about breast. I mean, it's definitely it's cause for high spirits. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a bit about the breast and why we should all get to know our breast a bit better. So medically um, or physiologically, the breast is simply a modified sweat gland. <laughs> oh, really? That's all it is? That's all it is. Oh, come on. Well, that's, that's a fact, you know. Okay. But of course, I mean, as evolution and um, the, the, the need to, to nourish the next generation, you know, became important, it, it became necessary to develop some way of feeding them. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the breast comes in. And so basically, it's a, it's a, it's a combination of fat some glands and some ducts. Ducts are like tubes, pipes that are, are going to um, provide um, the nourishment to the to the baby. Okay. You know? And so the primary, primary, and I say this, I say this um, sadly, that the primary um, use of the breast is just to make sure that the newborn baby is actually going to survive, get the nutrition they need to survive. That's mm -hmm. all. That's it. Everything else is, is secondary. Secondary. <laughs> How important is it for us to know our breast? Because there are lots of adults who have never actually studied their breasts well first of all it's yours so who else, who else needs to know their breasts but you? So you, you really have to take, take, um, take time out to get to know your breast. It's because if there's any change going on, you'd be the first person to actually notice those changes. Mm -hmm. And if you came to a health person, if you came to me, for instance, and told me that you have a problem with your breast, it might take me two, three visits before I would actually be able to tell that indeed there's a problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's if it's not an obvious um, you know, lump or something. It's because if you come to a doctor, it's just a snapshot in time. Yeah. So even if I did an examination, I may not find what you are describing because I don't know your breast. Mm -hmm. But if you came and said that I've been examining my breast, this is how it tastes normally, but I've noticed this specific change at this point, it makes it makes it, it makes it more um, uh, it gives us a lot more information and helps us to actually take uh, to plan what the next move is going to be. Okay. You see, so getting to know your body is very very important. It, it, it goes for all all parts of our bodies. I mean, it's it's, it's not it's not the uh, what's it called testicular cancer man, but if you don't look at your testes, how would you know there's a problem happening happening at the base? Hmm. You see, so you have to get to know every part of your body it's your body nobody can know it better than you yeah I couldn't have said that better so we're gonna get into the topic but briefly mm -hmm. show us how to examine our breasts since it's still breast cancer month <laughs> and there are people who probably still don't know how to examine their tatas well, let me just say, start by saying that uh, men hardly have any breast tissue. So mm -hmm. it's, it's weird doing this demonstration, but I'll do it anyway. <laughs> so basically, you stand in front of a mirror. Mm -hmm. And a mirror is very important because you need to be able to look at the breast and see if there's any obvious physical change. You see, so you have to look, stand in front of, of, of the, uh, the mirror. Now, trying to look at your breast on the top down doesn't work because it, it, it gives you a wrong impression of what's going on. And you can't really study the portion underneath the breast, mm -hmm. and which is also very, very important because there could be something happening there that you, can, you, have, you cannot see from the top. Yeah. So you stand in front of a mirror, look and see if everything is fine. Is there any change? Because everybody has one breast bigger than the other. Mm -hmm. Usually they say it's the left, but yours could be the right. It's not yeah. really a big deal. So you should know which one is bigger or which one hangs lower. So once you notice that um, that proportion is still there, that's fine. But if you notice that the one that was smaller has suddenly become bigger than the other one, then there's a problem. Mm. Or even if it's now equal in size, there's a problem. Okay. You see, because it's not that, that's not how it is. So then this next thing you do is you want to raise your hand up straight like you've been punished straight up <laughs> and you want to do this slowly as you are lifting your hand up you still be you'll be looking at the at the breast in the mirror okay. what you are looking for is as you are lifting the hand you only see there's any any dimpling something that was not there when your hands were down mm -hmm. is there any any skin tag anything any abnormality showing up as you lift your hands and also for those with smaller breasts as you lift your hand it helps you to see um, the area under, under under there if you have bigger breasts i mean lifting the hand might not expose that's that, that portion you have to actually physically lift the breast and inspect that side as well okay. Okay, so you literally lift the whole thing and then look 
what's going on exactly that's okay. if you have um, if you are if you are if, if you have well bigger then. exactly mm -hmm. then the next thing you want to do is now touch the breast so you have to take and 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 note you don't hold the breast in in between your fingers like so you don't do that mm. if you do that you always find a lump in quotes ah. because i mentioned that there are glands and there are ducts in there those ones also have a, a feeling of they have a granular feel so if you hold the breast this way you think going, you have lumps exactly everywhere. so you're going to use the flat of your palm to press against to press the breast against the chest wall mm. and you want to do this uh, touch every part of the breast that you can possibly touch you know it, you know normally they'll say divide the breast into four so four quadrants so you, you touch the outer the inner uh, um mm -hmm. inner upper so we're um, seeing that right now even. exactly so you touch every aspect of the breast now at this point you need to understand that the breast is not just what you see mm. the breast actually extends into the armpit so that's why you notice that at some point you you, you see people um, raise their hands yeah. exactly because the breast actually extends into the armpit so ah. if you touch all the parts you see and you leave out the armpit you've actually failed so you're supposed to go here as well exactly ah. interestingly the armpit area is where the, is the commonest site for breast cancer development hmm. because that is the biggest quadrant i mentioned that you divide the breast into, into four. four this is actually the upper outer is actually the biggest quadrant wow so that is where most breast cancers actually develop from so if you do not go into the armpit or the axilla as we call it you've actually failed completely hmm. so you have to touch the, the part inside the breast okay. i mean for people who are again well endowed you, it's obvious when you can actually see their breast extending but for the people with a smaller breast sometimes they may forget but it's important that you still check the fact that you may not see physically your breast is extending that does not mean that you don't have breast tissue there yeah. it's there so you have to put your hand there and make sure everything is fine okay. and if you if, if, if you if you do all this and you don't find anything the last thing you do is to squeeze the breast to see if any discharge comes out of the nipple Again, oh, like actually squeeze it. It won't hurt. <laughs> well, it depends on how you squeeze. Okay. <laughs> but at this point, I mean, like, let me let me just emphasize that it's not the nipple you are squeezing. Okay. You, if you squeeze the nipple, you will not get an accurate anything. So it's that you, you need to sort of put um, um, the breast between your two palms and and press downwards towards the nipple. Ah. Because so you the, don't squeeze like this. You squeeze like this. Well, you can squeeze this way, this way, whichever ah, okay. one you're comfortable. Okay. But then no, you're not squeezing the nipple because I see people just hold the nipple and squeeze and the nipple. It. No, that's not what you're doing okay. because the ducts are actually coming from the glands in the breast oh. the nipple or the areola area is just where the ducts end so if you just squeeze it it's kind of like you're holding a water hose yeah. and you press the tip of the water hose you're not going to do anything okay. so you have to squeeze from the top and bring it down you know sort of so milk if something comes out if something comes out it not necessarily it depends on what is coming out is it just clear fluid because depending on what time of the of the month you are in you might get some clear fluid discharge but if you notice anything like blood or brownish or mm. offensive that's a problem hmm. if you have pain that is unusual because again depending on the side the time of your cycle you may have some pain yeah you know so if you have unusual pain you should be concerned about it okay. and there's this thing too that um, we need to clarify sometimes you might find a lump in your breast it's always better good to examine the other breast as well mm -hmm. usually we find the same thing at the same place in both breasts it's usually not too alarming okay but if you found just one thing in one breast then Minister that's very very concerning thank you so much Dr. <laughs> Calvin, for that summary now five ways to love our breast and again if you have any questions for dr kelvin <laughs> let us hear them the hashtag is breakfast daily and the whatsapp line is 0550 plus i ghana just use the country code plus 233 he loves answering your questions where do we start from when we talk about <laughs> well we've touched on, on a few of them already so that means the first thing you want to do i mean as a sign that you love your breast is to look at your breast a lot of women actually, well, I'm using women because today we are discussing women. A lot of women actually are afraid, I don't know if it's, they are afraid or they are, they are uncomfortable looking at their breasts. Yeah. You have to look. That's the first, the most, one of the most important things you can do for yourself. Look at your breast because by, the, by observing the breast, you might be able to notice any changes. That's why even in a self-examination, the first step is to look look at the breast look at the color is there any any difference in color is there any redness on one side is there any bulge on one side that wasn't there before is that like i said is there is the the is the right one hanging lower than the left is that normal for you so look at the breast and observe all these things so that's number one you cannot even uh, begin to examine your breast without looking at the breast and if you went to the hospital and um, the first thing the doctor would do would be to look at your breast because that's the most important thing then the second thing is also still related to examining the breast. So feel the breast. Hmm. Again, a lot of women will tell you that eh, I, I, I can't touch myself. You, they make it seem like it's, some, it's, it's a sin. But if, if you don't touch your breast, how would you know what's going on? Yeah. You see, that's why we say that um, in the grand scheme of things, you as the lady need to examine your breast every month as often as possible and then go to the health facility once a year. So if, between the two, it tells which one is more important. 
you exactly so you have to be able to touch your breast and notice the difference the difference or how your breast even feels because again some people some ladies generally have a lumpy feeling to their breast so if you came if you came to me um, the first time and I examined you and I noticed some lumpiness I would I need to know is this your normal yeah. or is there something abnormal going on because if your breast is naturally lumpy it's, it's so easy for somebody to call um, a problem a cancer yeah. when indeed it's your normal status you know mm -hmm. so you have to feel your breast yourself and know what's going on then number three is that <laughs> you have to eat well eat well yes okay how if you love your breast you have to eat well <laughs> what are we supposed to be eating? Well, you see, the, 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 um, a poor diet, a diet um, that causes you to gain weight, can affect your breast. In the sense that, of course, you can gain volume um, in breast when you put on weight. Mm -hmm. And some people actually love, I love, love it. Yeah. I mean, I, I know, I know some, some people who actually only take selfies at that time of the month when, 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 when they, they have when, the, when you, you know, get a little bit of exactly, volume in there. Exactly. <laughs> so some people actually intentionally gain weight so that they can have bigger breasts. Mm -hmm. But you should understand that um, the, the, the whole weight gain has complications yeah. because there's a lot of, even this cancer we are discussing, not particularly breast cancer per se, but cancer in general have been associated with um, obesity so you have to understand that you are putting yourself at risk and secondly should you get to a point where you want to lose weight by that weight loss especially if you don't lose weight the right way you could actually develop a sag because the because your breast has, has now lost volume because you lost weight hmm. because there's fat in there so if you lose weight you're going to lose some fat in the breast as well yeah. so if you you, you you i mean so you could actually have your breast sagging because you lost weight wow. so if you are not ready to deal, to deal with all those complications then don't just follow a normal healthy diet okay. a lot more a lot more and um, fruits a lot more vegetables and um, would, would help you do that antioxidants are very good in this regard okay then the, the fourth point is exercise. Ah. Like <laughs> exercise. exercise the breast itself or just exercise the whole body? <laughs> the whole body. Okay. But, I mean, whilst you're exercising the whole body, obviously the breast is all, is, and the muscle, the muscle layer, you see the breast sits on top of muscle. And these muscles play a role in making the and keeping the um, the breast firm mm. and and for those who like who like it standing way whichever. But re really, whether your breasts are going to stand or sag, there's a hereditary component oh. which you can't really do much about. Mm -hmm. So the the teaching is look at your mother. Mm, whatever, should... whatever your mother has, you probably get similar. Yeah. Or but then look... wear sports bra as well. I see Very important. So I was going to come to that. Because if you're exercising, um, the, the breasts move a lot. And yeah. people make the mistake of assuming that because my breast is small, I don't need to wear sports bra. Yeah. That's a very, very wrong approach. Because once you start exercising, jumping around, jogging, etc., it's going to move a lot. And as it's moving, remember that it's going to stretch the skin. Yeah. And that contributes to the sag. So if you are concerned about your breast sagging, you must wear sports bra. And, and the it, right size. It must I be, guess. yes. And, it, and the right size of bra. Again, people assume that all sports bras are sports bra, But actually, sports bras also come in sizes. Yeah. And the cup, size, um, cup sizes and all that. Which would then lead me to point number five. <laughs> which is that you have to wear the right size of bra. Mm. What does that have to do with anything? Well, because, first of all, if you don't wear the right size of bra. Okay, let's, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me take it from here. The breasts have weight. It weighs, and the bigger your breast is, the more weight it is. So you actually have people, women with bigger breasts, who tend to slouch mm, because they are trying them down. exactly it's weighing them down. But most of research has shown that if you wear the right bra, it can actually help you correct your posture. Because mm. if your if your sitting posture or your walking posture is bad, not only are you going to have you are going to actually have problems with your back, your spine, you are going to have issues. Wow. You see, and so um, um, the fact that you are not you are not sitting the right way is not a good thing. So the right bra size would help correct your posture because it's going to give support to the to the breast so that it's not weighing so it's not going to weigh you down too much mm -hmm. so that's number one then number two if you wear if you are wearing the wrong um, cup size this time mm -hmm. it's going to it's going to squeeze the, the, the breast in an in, in a way that is not the best yeah and, and it'll be spilling over sometimes on yes. the side well i like that description <laughs> it does spill over exactly and when, when it when it does that spilling over you're actually weakening the the suspension ligaments that are holding the breast in place and so the wrong size of bra will contribute to your breast sagging much much sooner mm. than than it would if you're wearing the correct bra size so a bra size is very very important so make sure that you are wearing the bra the right size for your for your breast thank you very <laughs> but much let, let me just quickly add that oh, smoking smoking also causes breasts to sag how 
What's the connection? <laughs> well, don't smoke. <laughs> That's oh, the but what's the connection? <laughs> because like, smoking has a lot of... Lungs, they're, they're, how does yeah. that end up in your breast? Ex because well, smoking has a lot of chemicals. When you smoke, you, you expose yourself to a lot of, a lot of toxic chemicals. Mm. And some way, somehow, it's been associated with sagging. Wow. I don't, the, the, the direct and linkage is... keep the... Don't smoke. Don't smoke. Okay. Of course, smoking also leads to breast cancer, so I mean, don't, don't smoke. Don't smoke at all. <laughs> I have some questions for you. Hmm. I'll try to read all your questions. I did say I'll read them. <laughs> uh, Ike for Wager says, I would like to know if it's true that unmarried women, I mean those that are not sexually active, are at a greater risk of developing breast cancer issues. Okay. Good morning, <laughs> Jifa. Please, I'm watching from Kaswa. Okay, let's see. Last week, I felt some pain inside my right breast, and both of them, I see some clear water coming out is that normal so again it will depend on you is it normal for you if you think it's not normal you have to have it checked right, out because sometimes at, at some point at uh, during the cycle you could have some pain which may be normal mm -hmm. but if this is the first time you're experiencing it you should you should have it checked out because you've been having your period for how many years now and this is mm -hmm. the first time having pain that's that's a red flag okay is um, lack of sexual activity a <laughs> so, cause of potential cause of no okay however pregnancy is protective when it comes to breast cancer wow so when you actually get the in in terms of breast cancer mm -hmm. i'm very 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 specific in terms of breast cancer the number of times you actually give birth will reduce your likelihood of developing breast cancer hmm. because it break it, there's a break of nine months plus yeah. an additional six months if you did exclusive breastfeeding okay. where you're not getting as high uh, as much estrogen as you were getting before oh. and estrogen has been linked to breast cancer okay. and so every time there's a break in the estrogen it protects you all right but remember that the more children you have the more likely you are to develop cervical cancer so Ooh. it's not it's not you the one that. it's it's, it's yes. you really have to weigh the two and it's decide it. so okay. don't go and bond plenty very because you have to have kids because you want to avoid exactly breast cancer. let's not do <laughs> that. Last question. Well, yeah. Uh, Kekeli from Hohoi says, good morning. Thanks for the good work, Jifa. Please, doctor, can you use the host for practicals? The theory is too much. <laughs> well, well, your audience is speaking. <laughs> really, doctor? I'm, I'm, I'm just a service man. <laughs> Next time, we'll, we'll call Tufo on the set to join us so that we will use him as the as, as a. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Kelvin. All Kevin. right, thank you very much. Where do we follow your social media? Well, I'm on Facebook and Instagram, Kelvin Uzu MD, and on Twitter, Nase Puku. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And of course, this is made possible by the farmer's market. I go there for all my fruits, my vegetables, your salad, your smoothies, your protein, anything you need to really start this journey of being healthy you can find at the farmer's market. Thank you so much, Dr. Kelvin, for being with us. Thank you very much. Hi there. We hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share with your friends. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. Join the Breakfast Daily team Monday through Fridays from 7.30 a.m. to 10. Join us for breakfast daily only on City TV.